In this website I'm going to show you how to use the advanced settings on a default website or any other website in IIS and a Windows 2008 R2 server. First thing we're going to want to do is open up the IIS manager. From here we'll make sure that the server is chosen. We'll expand that, go to sites, and then the website you'd like to make the change to. From here we're going to right click, we're going to choose manage website, and then choose advanced settings. In the advanced settings we can change the application pool. Right now it's in the default pool. We hit the drop down. We can choose another pool that may have been created earlier. We can also click on the bindings and we can see that it's bound to HTTP port 80 using any available IP address and the host header is test.com. So we can change any of that right here if we decide we want to. We can even add additional uh, host headers as well. The ID is going to be 1, it's our first website in the list. The second website will be 2, etc. The name is going to be default website, that's going to match the website name over here. The physical path is going to be, the, as you see, the system drive, which is where the program is installed, inetpub, www.root. We can change that by just clicking on here, choosing a different folder in our list. Physical path credentials, by default, the iUser has uh, anonymous access to this, but if we want to, we can change that to a specific user here. Click Set, type the username and the password. Physical path credentials, logon type, of course, has clear text by default, but if we want, we can change that to interactive, batch, or network. Do we want the website to start automatically or not? True or false? Uh, by default, you, wouldn't want, you would want the website to automatically start. Under connection limits, we have a timeout for the user to actually connect, and that's uh, in 120 seconds before they'll have to be technically logged back in, and they'll have to refresh their page. The maximum bandwidth is set here in bytes per second, and the maximum concurrent connection is here. So we can change either of these if we want to limit the bandwidth that the person has, or how many connections can connect at the same time. We can also change the enabled protocols. We can add additional protocols such as HTTPS for secure communication. Uh, we can add additional ports as well. And when you're done, you click OK.